What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV, all right? So shout out to the sports chat group that I'm in. We were talking about this. Not a lot of people like to talk about this. Uh, I know Ticket TV has talked about this. I've talked about this a couple times. Um, and that is that Kevin Durant continues to get a bit of a pass, man. He gets a pass from the mainstream media, especially. I'm not giving him any fucking passes. No. Look, we get on LeBron James, rightfully so. He stacks the deck. Uh, whenever he goes to a new franchise, the team will make cuts of his young core or potential core to acquire a guy like LeBron. Then, of course, they have to shape the roster, you know, in accordance to what a team that will fit around LeBron James. So oftentimes they get rid of young key talent in exchange for expediency, which is uh, maybe a championship, maybe two in the short term. But in the long term, the franchise, the franchise will get set back several years until they are able to reset to where they were before they got LeBron James. That's the that's the payoff. You know, that's the, the price you have to pay, I guess I should say. All right? And we all say this, you know. Uh, if LeBron is so great. Why do you have to have certain players around him? Why couldn't he make these guys look good? Blah, 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 blah whatever, right? And we have all these examples of guys who were jettisoned from the Lakers, but then elsewhere they go, or other teams, and they're superstars or all-stars. We know this. But the same can be said about Kevin Durant, even more so in a lot of instances. Kevin Durant, first of all, let's, let's, let's remember some shit about him. We all remember five and a half years ago, almost, when Kevin Durant made the weakest decision in the history of free agency, and that is he joined a team that had just eliminated his team six weeks prior. He joined that goddamn team. I couldn't even see LeBron James doing that. Can you see, as much as people get on LeBron James, right, because there's a lot of hatred out there, but let's take the blinders off. Could you see LeBron James joining that Boston Celtic team? At least LeBron James has that much of a competitive spirit. He wouldn't ever do that shit. That's the equivalency to me in a lot of ways. Maybe they didn't quite have the same rivalry, per se, like playing each other every year. But if you're, the, if you're KD, you're supposed to want to beat the Warriors. They're the team to beat in the Western Conference. Nope, you joined them. Thunder fan felt betrayed. Longtime NBA watchers, you know, observers were absolutely floored by the decision. Um, I, I, I just to this day still think it was, it was absolutely the weakest move I've ever seen in my life. But whatever, he was happy, right? Or at least he said he was happy. So whatever made him happy, that's good, right? But what happens when he gets there? Seems to have some type of envy toward Curry. Well, why does the fans love him but not me as much? Nigga, because he's fucking homegrown. That's why. He's, he, he, he was drafted there, not a free agent. They watched him grow up to be, to become Steph Curry. They watch his game mature. He grew up under them. You were a free agent signing. It'd be like Dennis Rodman whining. Why don't Chicago love me as much as they like Mike? I mean, I don't they working hard. All you do is shoot the goddamn ball. Why don't they love me? Man. Then you let fucking Draymond Green and the media run you away from them. 
Pick up Chris Broussard. Kevin Durant, he needs a challenge. You know, he's not being challenged in Golden State. I think Kevin Durant should go to the New York Knicks. That's what I think. Yeah. You want Katie to go to a mediocre big market like New York so you can talk about them all the fucking time. And in the process, because everybody knew LeBron was going to the West, make it easier for the for the West. Make it easier for LeBron to win. Everybody knew what the fuck the play was, but KD did it any fucking way. But instead of going to New York, he went to Brooklyn. Okay, fine. You brought your your boy Kyrie there. Fine. Okay. Now this is where it gets real stupid. Now we all knew that KD was hurt. All right. But you had a nice young core there. A nice young core of talent. That team went to the playoffs without either one of those guys. So when Kevin Durant came back, you just knew this was going to be a great team. And they looked like a great team initially early last year. They looked like a really good goddamn team. They looked like the type of team that could have won 65 games or so. But what happens? The motherfucker gets greedy, super greedy, want to super stack the deck, and brings in James Harden. Okay? So what do they do? They get rid of guys like Torian Prince, but more importantly, they get rid of guys like Jared Allen and Karis LeVert. And then... In the offseason, Spencer did what he's gone. He's playing with the Wizards. Now you look at the situation. You got Jared Allen looking like an all-star. Averaging 17 points, 11 rebounds. Last couple of, uh, you know, maybe the last two weeks, he might be averaging like closer to 20 and 12. He's looking like he's going to be an all-star. You got Spencer Dinwiddie, who's averaging about 14 points a game, but on any particular night, can give you 18 to 20 points a night. Karis LeVert, who hopefully when he finally gets himself back to his real true self, he gets you between 18 and 22 points a night. I remember the game when he dropped 51 as a Brooklyn net. Karis LeVert. He is a perennial all-star when he's healthy and playing at his best. And they gave all of that up for a fat, pussy, beard-smelling, donut-fucking-chewing, honey-bun-munching, pirate-beard-having motherfucker. And James Harden, who as the second option, is putting up numbers that are a little bit worse than Russell Rushbrook is putting up as the third option for the Lakers. Kyrie looks like he's done. Report came out, Kyrie is happy. Uh, A friend of his said he's the happiest he's seen him in years. He's keeping his shape. You know, so maybe, you know, a guy like Zion need to take some notes from him. Maybe he need to, maybe he need to mentor Zion in that department. He's in shape, but he's the happiest he's been in years. And he ain't like he's when you look at what's going on in New York and they're becoming even stricter with guidelines. If anything, he's not coming back this year, and more than likely he's gonna miss at least most of next year because I don't think they're gonna change this shit anytime soon. Next year is the last year of his contract, so it's looking like Kyrie Irving will never play another game unless something drastic happens. He's never going to play another game for the Brooklyn Nets. That's it. I don't think he's going to retire. He's going to come back eventually. But no, I don't think he's going to be as a Brooklyn Net. James Harden, who didn't sign that max extension, that's it. I don't think he's come back after this year. Why? Because Brooklyn ain't going to win no fucking title this year. They're not going to win any fucking thing. And who gives a fuck if Kevin Durant gets some consolation scoring title? Fuck that. 
So he's gonna do all of this bullshit. He went, he threw away all that fucking talent for nothing. For nothing. And I don't want no revisionist bullshit either. Because when that move was made to get James Harden, everybody, including myself, we all said, well, that's a championship on the planet. Yeah, they got holes, but having all those great players, should it, it'll, it'll cover up those holes. You know, rebounding issues, lack of defense in some areas. But having all that talent should cover it up. Nope. Meanwhile, Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks, despite all of those staggering injuries they had earlier this year, Dante DiVincenzo is in the G in the G League right now for the Bucks, their G League team, so he should be back within the next month. Within the next month, so they're starting to heal. They got Boogie. I'm at the point now, I'm starting to think, I'm, I'm starting to become comfortable enough to say this. And I hate this because I want the Bulls to be the first uh, first player. I think within three weeks, the, Bull, uh, the, the Bucks going to be in first place in the Eastern Conference. Despite all of those earlier losses, despite all of the hardship that was under 500 after 15 games, they're going to be in the first place. And, and Giannis don't have another top 75 player he's playing with. He's not playing with another top 150. Or potentially top 200. When I think about it, I don't think Chris Middleton is top 150 or top 175. He may even be top 200. So he's not playing with no all-time great players right now. The Marcus Cousins is only 70% of what he once was, probably. But that, but you don't see Giannis complaining about that. But here you got Kevin Durant playing with all these supposed all-time great players, and James Harden, the greatest scorer God's ever created, apparently. That's what everybody was telling us. So if the Nets don't win the championship, matter of fact, if the Nets don't even make it to the finals, it's a failure. It's a failure. I don't care how the media want to spin it, it's a fucking failure. And he got nobody else to blame but himself. Because they should have kept the goddamn team they had as constructed, or he should have stayed his ass in fucking Golden State. And if anything, they should have traded fucking Draymond Green. 